In tonight's corner office, America's dependency on oil and the costs associated with it. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, about 40 percent of the oil used in the states is imported, costing more than $300 billion annually. Domestic oil production for shale formations and improved fuel economy standards have decreased our reliance on oil imports over the last few years, but there's still a long way to go. One of the companies that is at the forefront of trying to reduce the dependency is Torchlight Energy. And the company's chief operating officer, Will McAndrew, is here on Arise Exchange to talk about that. Will, thank you. It's an honor to have you on the program. Well, Andrew, thank you very much for having me here today. So, uh, you know, earlier in the program, we were talking about cap and trade. The president is going to impose new cap and trade restrictions uh, or plans starting next week. Uh, what is, is your company and the industry's position on cap and trade? Well, I think there's, it's, it's a mechanism and a vehicle to, to help reduce pollution, obviously. But there's also all kinds of other ways and means that my industry is, is doing exactly that. And just like Boone Pickens says, we have the most natural gas reserves in the world right here in the United States. And, and you're starting to see buses and trucks and you're, and you're starting to see more type refueling type centers. And natural gas burning obviously reduces it, the amount of greenhouse gases. And to get to natural gas, you need to frack, right? You've got to go through shale. Uh, and, and there's some controversy about that. But, but how do you move the ball on that? For example, here in New York, you're waiting for the governor to make a decision about that, while our neighbor, Pennsylvania, is raking in the money on fracking. Well, not, uh, not all natural gas production comes from fracking. Now, obviously, there's been a significant change due to the fracking in wells, and there's a lot of regulations in place. And if everybody in the industry, my industry, would comply with the rules that are already in place, you would have significantly less incidents of, the, of some of the complaints that you see out there. Well, let me address that then. I mean, is the industry good at self-policing itself? Because, because every time you hear all the positives of fracking, but then, of course, when there's a spill... Uh, you know, people are terrified that their, their water is going to be contaminated for 100 years. Well, but the bottom line is just like any, any industry. You, you go and look at the car dealership around the corner. They sell brand new cars. Well, that's just like the Keystone Pipeline. It'd be a brand new pipeline. It'd be the safest way to move liquids and gas from point A to point B. Uh, but at the same time, if, if all the industry would, if you look at the car industry and then you look over to used car salesmen, I mean, who's going to comply with it the most? I mean, there's already all kinds of regulations so, out okay, there. Okay, so how do we get the government to either back off on the regulations or put smart regulations in place to get this going? Well, I think it's a combination of things. And when you're talking about self-policing in the industry, I think all the companies, but I've been in this business for four generations and, and all of it, Exxon and, and so forth. Yeah, you've worked at, what, what I love about this company is a small cap company. You started in the really big companies. Well, that's right. We all and, did. Yeah. And at the bottom line is, is we try to comply with every regulation that's out there, but not every person out there tries to comply with every regulation and it, pick any industry. So you have to kind of lead the way. Um, <clears throat> is the innovations in the energy sector happening from companies like yours, the small companies, uh, or from the, the Exxon Mobiles? Most innovation comes from the large independents, not, not the big, huge oil and gas companies. They're, they're junior oil and gas companies, just like the fracking came out with Mitchell in, 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 out of Texas. Uh, all the, a lot of these fields that are out there right now were owned once by majors, and then they sold them down, and innovation came through a lot of the smaller companies. Is it a challenge for you competing against the big guys out there? Well, it is, but I think in part... We are light, nimble. There's only a few of us in the company. We have uh, some great partners with who we do business with. We're a NASDAQ-traded company, mm -hmm. and we have New York Stock Exchange companies and NASDAQ companies that we work with. But I think what we can do for a mineral owner, landowner, is, is tell them that we're going to do it right, we're going to comply, and give them a drilling commitment. We have about 30 seconds left. What are, what are key points you want to identify to move us to the so-called energy independence? Use the resources we have. Use the infrastructure we have. Don't be a Including alternative resources. Alternative, you know, again, everybody wants to go alternative fuels, and I'm great for that, but there's been half a trillion dollars spent and accounts for 4 or 5% of our energy needs. It needs to keep pushing forward with green, green fuels, but it's not going to get there overnight. So what can we do, and that's natural gas and okay. oil. Um, Will McAndrew, thank you so much. This has been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Andrew. Appreciate it. Friday on Exchange is the golfing industry heading for bankruptcy. Why experts say thousands are leaving the sport and leaving companies struggling to stay afloat on the back nine. Take a look at the markets once again. The S&P 500 at a record high in 1911. I'm Andrew Schmertz. Thanks for watching Arise Exchange. In business today, three things to know. First,